Good day, everyone. How are we? I'm back. I'm alive. I survived COVID. <laughs> 41 waiting. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I've still got a bad cough, but 51 on. Well, there you go. Hope you're well. Let me know if you can hear me okay, guys. YouTube saying I'm live. Thank you, YouTube. Hope you're all well. It's been a while, guys. I've been, been out of action with this bloody COVID. Still got a shock and cough, and Roz is... Roz isn't well. She's been in bed all afternoon now. So Jamil got it now, Roz. Dear, oh dear. Roz thinks just a head cold. But anyway, we're all good. Loud and clear. Thanks, Tech Stories. Thank you very much. G'day, Steve. How are you? Evening, everyone. What did I miss? You haven't missed anything, you diddly donk. Only just started. It's 7.01. You are past your bedtime, Steve. You're one minute past bedtime. Um... Get well. No, I'm all right. Wild track. I'm back to normal, mate. I'm going to get back into it, back into routine tomorrow. I've been a week and a half just lying in this bloody room. Um, but, I, you know, I, was, I come good and I've just got a bit of a cough now. But, um, yeah, I'm over that uh, the COVID. I did test positive the COVID. I did one of the tests and come up and knocked me, knocked me for six for a couple of days. But, yeah, I'm all right now. Pissing here, Bucks in Taunton. Yeah, it was, um, tell you what, I could hardly see the road on the way back from Townsville today. Got over the, the uh, Carble Range there and boy, oh boy, it's not raining here in Innisfail at the moment, just a bit drizzly, but we had some real bloody, real heavy rain on the way home today. I could hardly see the road there a couple of times. And you always get, you know, everyone, most people are just sitting there you know, driving the, and there's got to be someone in a land cruiser. Got to overtake in the pouring rain and just cutting it fine to get in on his own side. There's just one all the time, isn't there? That just cannot be patient. You got to overtake. There's some frigging idiots out there. Yeah, Para had a good win today, and I was that's why I only come on right on seven. Is the Newcastle Knights just hung on over the Melbourne Storm? So. Yeah, uh, Brendan. Uh, hey, Brendan, how are you, mate? Battellini, I'm good, mate. I'm going well. I'm on the mend now. I'm over the bloody COVID thing. What was I about to say then? Yeah, Cowboys are um, up the top of the ladder after three rounds. The only team to win all three games so far. And uh, we got the Brisbane Broncos next week. And we should win that, even though it's down in Brisbane. We should bloody win that one because Brisbane's without Reynolds, Payne Haas and um, Reese Walsh. Three of their big players are out. So there's no reason the Cowboys, they should be going down to Brisbane looking at a, a solid win there and doing four in a row. There's no reason why they shouldn't win. They need to get off to a better start, but they get off to a bad start, uh, the Cowboys. They need to sort that shit out big time. That left side defence there, Talangi and Val Holmes, they need to tighten that up. They're bloody loose as out on that side. And uh, other teams know about it too. <coughs> Oh, Ross Stafford. G'day, Ross. How are you, mate? Nat Atkinson. Hey, everyone. Hope you're well. Martini's Adventures. A lot of upsets. Yeah, that's it's always good. And the Tigers had a win. Well, it's good to see the West Tigers. I um, don't like to see the same team getting beaten all the time. The West Tigers had a good win over bloody the Sharks. So good on the Tigers. That'll give them some confidence now. Benji's boys. Um uh, Mark Lavelle, my son's good mates with Scotty Drinkwater. Good stuff. What a great player he is, Scotty Drinkwater. Going really well. Yeah, I know, Pete. Cowboys are doing well. It's only only after round three, mate. Penrith's up in the top four again now. They're going to be the team to beat again this year. They are a very well-oiled machine, Penrith. They really are. Um... Uh, the wanderer, oh, the wanderer went out to Goombara today. G'day, Rob. How are you, um, mate? If that, if that battery's starting, it's only three years old. You, it, you should get five years out of those kick-ass um, batteries. Do a recondition if that doesn't work, mate. If you've got a recondition mode on your battery charger, do a recon on it, mate. That'll spark it back up again. But it, it'll, it'll come back rather than just charge it up. Um, one of my battery charges got recon. So it does a full recondition on it. And, um, yeah, that does really well on lead-acid batteries, the recon mode. Uh, Five-year warranty. 
yeah. I don't know if they do want. You've got to you've got to look after them too, mate. You're not supposed to let them go flat and all that type of stuff. Rob, give yourself an uppercut, mate. You've got to keep your eye on that. That should be sitting lead acid sitting on 12.7, 12.8. Uh, once it's all fully charged up, mate. Once you stop charging and that, it should hold. Once it's full, it should be sitting there on about 12.7 for a lead acid uh, for an or an AGM battery. Um, lithiums bit different 13.3 13.4 or whatever for a lithium but those yeah the agm battery should be sitting on about 12 7 12 8 when it's fully charged once you take it off the charger if it holds that mate you should be right um g'day terry how are you mate hope you're well good live feed with the maniac the other night um yeah, I know, mate. We all take our eye off the ball sometimes with batteries and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Interesting to see Phil there pricing some trailers, like a 6x4 box trailer or a 7x5, and he said just the, the cost to even buy a new galvanised box trailer these days is ridiculous. Um, you know, nearly three grand or whatever. But, hey, Phil, if, if you're on there, that might be what you got to do, mate, to, to do it. Or if you can pick up a good second-hand one, mate, a good second-hand galvanised trailer. Um, yeah, if you're going to pick up a second-hand camper trailer, some of those Chinese camper trailers are heavy. I know Russ has got one. I forget what brand it is, MDC or something. They're, they're not far behind a bloody hybrid caravan for weight, those Chinese um, camper trailers. they got a lot of weight in them. Um Mine's not too bad. It's just a bloody box trailer, basically, with a with a frame on it. Um, who else we got here? Jack Turtle, hope you're well, mate. Blackers. Good. Um, Blackers been down fishing around Eden there, guys, southern New South Wales. Caught a flathead there and a few other little fish. Catch them more than me, mate, that's for sure. How good is it down around Eden? Absolutely beautiful. Tell you a place I'd like to go back to and um, have another a better look around. And the beaches were stunning. Was Jarvis Bay or Jervis Bay? Depends where you're from. Uh, Jarvis Bay, John O's campers. Yeah, I know a bloke. If your canvas is no good on a John John O's camper, I know a bloke who'd be able to do you up a a good one because he used to work for him. Crazy dog. Uh, yeah, everyone's into the John O's campers and that. Yeah, as I said, no. No Aussie ones. I think Cubs still around, aren't they? Cub campers. But you're paying big money for them, obviously. Anything Aussie made. Um, uh, hey, Matt. Matt checking in from Canada. G'day, mate. How are you? Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Now, you were in bloody Alaska last time we spoke, and now you're in Canada, mate. Um, give us an update, Matt. What have you been doing? Last time you were in Anchorage or something, weren't you? In Canada, and now you're in... Uh, sorry, in Alaska, and now you're in Canada. So where do you normally live, mate? Do you live in Canada, work in Alaska or something? I'm not quite sure. Give us an update, Matt, if you can. Good to hear from you. Uh, flathead tails, yum. Oh, that's a popular fish down south to eat flathead. And a lot of people who eat fish always say flathead's nice. Um, cub now make caravans worth a squillion dollars. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I can imagine their camper trailers were expensive. I can imagine only how the uh, thing. Uh, we went past Jawa have just opened up in Townsville. And Jared, um, my old mate Jared, he's running the Jawa uh, place there in, in Townsville. I didn't know, although I was going to drop in and say good day to Jared, but um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, me and Jared. Uh, disagreed a lot over Jawa caravans. Jared, Jared's very pro Jawa. I was, I had a lot to say about them. There was a lot of things I didn't like about the Jawas, and probably the same as a lot of those Chinese caravans. They're heavy bloody nuggets. They certainly are, and the awnings on them are absolutely shite, absolute shite on those Chinese caravans. Flimsy pieces of shit. Anyway, um, got to catch them to appreciate them. Yeah, I know. I'll get into some. Fishing one day. Hey, Beaker, how are you, mate? Pete, you're down in Adelaide. What are you doing down there, mate? You're on holidays? Um, just got back from Townsville, mate. Seeing the Pink concert. Talk about that in a minute. Too bad. 
Uh, Matt said, I live in Alaska but work in Canada. Four weeks on for four weeks off. Okay. Um, oh, okay, mate. Good stuff. So you do a bit of traveling. I don't know if you're in the mines or, or something like that. Live in Alaska, work in Canada. Wow, I'll tell you what, that um, traveling during wintertime be interesting. Ja yes, Jawa is sponsoring Parramatta. Yes, they are. When you look up the Parramatta coaches box, it's got Jawa off-road campers there. So Jawa are uh, getting in and doing a bit of sponsorship, which is good on them. Good on them for that. And um, yeah, it's uh, sponsoring Parramatta, the coaches box there. Uh, looks good when you see up in the coach and all the Jawa signs there. But anyway, I don't have a Jawa anymore. <laughs> I got rid of it. Um, Blackers, living in Geelong, 12 hours on and 12 hours off. Live in Geelong, 12 hours on and 12 hours off. Yeah, that's a bit like what I was in the prisons, mate. 12 on, 12 off for four days and then four days off type thing. So it's a long shift, 12 hours, doesn't it? It just drags on. 12 hours is a long shift. Uh Jokers are wankers anyway. Brad and Denise. <laughs> hey, um, Ros and I, I'm doing a 12-hour, three days, four off. Oh, okay. Yeah, we uh, our prison thing was all over the place, mate. Um, it it kind of worked out three on, four off type thing. Sometimes we get six off. Sometimes we only get two off. It was all over the place like a mad woman shit our roster. But anyway, I've got... Uh, Nil on, seven off now, my roster, now that I'm retired. And I don't give a shit about anything. Nil on, seven off. That's the best roster to be on, everyone, let me tell you. Except the money dries up a bit when you're not working, but it's still better than working. Um, yeah, it wasn't a bad roster and that. It's just that when you were working, it was a shit place to work in a prison. It was a shit place to work. The days off were good. The days on were shite. Um, Aussie Matt oh, okay. I'm a fire at the airport and we do 24 hours on 24 hours off 5 days off it's great roster 24 hours on you obviously sleep half that mate uh, knowing being fireys I'm saying you could bloody set up the bed and that but in a lot of jobs you couldn't do 24 hours on mate it just as a police officer and correctional officer and that you, you couldn't do that you can't do 24 hours on it's um you got to be you got to be alert mate you can't be as a copper carrying a gun on your hip and you go to a domestic violence situation 22 hours into a 24 hour shift and your eyes are hanging out of your head and you get confronted by a situation you got to use your firearm or one of the other bloody tools of the trade uh, not a good look, mate. Uh, that's why the Queensland police don't even do 12-hour shifts, mate, um, because of that very reason. In the prisons, we did. But the coppers, um, when I was in, I don't know if they've changed now, but they only did eight-hour shifts, mate, because you had to be on the ball. You're carrying a gun. You, had, you, you couldn't be walking around with your eyes hanging out of your head. It was bad enough doing midnight to eight shift, and that 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning, your eyes would be hanging out of your head. You get called out to a bloody traffic accident or a domestic or something, and you know it's yeah you got to be you got to be on the ball. So twenty four hours on, fireys might be able to get away with it, mate. Coppers and screws and that can't. Um, yeah, we got caught sleeping in in the prison. If we got caught sleeping on shift. Uh, you lose your job, mate. We weren't allowed to sleep. We were there to respond to emergencies and all that type of stuff. We had to be ready to go. I'm not saying people didn't sleep, but if you got caught, you're in the shit, and blokes did their job over it. So, yeah. Um, so we used to sit up and sit on YouTube and that and have our radios on, and, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning, you get a code blue, one of the units or whatever, someone's having a freaking heart attack or someone slashed his neck or he slashed his wrists up. You'd have to be up there quick smart uh, to attend to it, and it happened quite regularly, let me tell you. So, yeah. But I know, uh, I know a few fireys. Um, you're allowed to sleep, so fair enough. And you can probably get away with 24 hour shifts. Um, but when you retire, days off are great. The money is shit. Yes, Newey, they are, mate. They are. When you um go on to a pension, it's uh, you got to tighten the belt, mate. You got to tighten the belt. Let me tell you. But um, it's still 
mentally wise, mental mental health wise, I am way better off. Let me tell you, I went through some shit times there uh, just before I bloody got out of corrections, and I wasn't in a good good headspace. Um, Nineteen years of those two jobs combined were starting to catch up on me, and um, but I, I bloody I tell you now, it's the best thing I did was get out of those two jobs. I'm a lot better now, a lot better. Uh, time to relax, and that's what I'm doing, Black. Is, that's what I am doing, mate. That's why I do this type of stuff. It's good. Um, yeah, I was just becoming a bitter, angry man. Just hated the world. And Roz said, you go and do something about your anger. And I, I was the person you used to see on Buckaroonie, and that was a different person in real life. I had some real problems. I couldn't control me friggin' anger. I just got so angry over the, at the drop of a hat at everything. Just didn't matter. Everything just pissed me off. And um, anyway, it still does now, but I, I've managed to I've managed to do it a lot better. So if anyone ever is a bit like that, guys, and you can't con keep your temper under control, uh, first thing I suggest is have a look at the job you're in because that's what that's what was contributing to my problems. Gigi's on. G'day, mate. You still do. Bull's not as bad as I did, Gidge. Don't you talk. Um, the, did you, speaking of Gidgey, did you see that thing I put up on Facebook with a, the bear and the gorilla in the shopping centre and the bear hits the gorilla in the head with the big hammer and the gorilla chases it? Geez, that's funny. Ozzy sent that to me. Bloody funny as. It really is. Now, Gidge, I'm bloody heaps better than now, mate, than a couple of years ago. I'm way better. And I was only thinking the other day about last time I smashed my phone or smashed something around the house. It's been a been a long time, mate. I've I, I'm got my temper under control now, and I put it down to the friggin' jobs I was in. It was snuck up on me, and I didn't realise it. And I keep saying that I've got a lot of mates in the job still, and I just keep saying, "Oh, keep an eye on it, fellas. Keep an eye on it because it sneaks up on you. It's a bit of a dark job, guys, and it can bloody have some mental." mental problems up here and I said we had a couple of couple officers take their own lives and all that type of stuff and it's bloody terrible uh just because of the some of the dark shit we see behind the wire uh most people a lot of people wouldn't be able to handle that job inside there it's um takes a bit of a special breed to to do that job i tell you now um What's the Gigi? The Gigi's uh, coming back to Townsville soon. Good on you, Jack. Back to Townsville this week for a bit. Yeah, Gidge is um, finishing up at Early Beach and coming back to Townsville. Be good to help mum out around the house a bit there, mate. And then I guess he's just got to wait for a bloody military aviation job to come up. Um, no, Landy, there wasn't, mate. No. Mate, it wasn't, wasn't so much the job. I mean, we can sit there and blame the job and that. I think it was um, relationship type shit. I'll tell you now, nine times out of a 10, when you hear of a bloke necking himself, you can guarantee nine times out of 10, it'll be something to do with a relationship breakdown. Men do not handle that well at all, do we? Um, don't handle it well at all. So I, I think the guys who, I know the second bloke, I didn't know much about, the first young fella that necked himself, but I know Mickey Dixon was a relationship breakdown, which is why he, bloody terrible. And it, and you know when you have someone at work take their own life, guys, it just it guts you. It guts the workforce. You know, like uh, Mick, I work closely with Mick. We used to work together all the time in the same units and that. And and when you get told that he's taking his own life, it's friggin' not good. And then we had one of our great community members, Fisherman Fecky guys, who we all loved, same thing happened to him. And it's just sad. It really is. It's just sad when that happens. So, you know, guys, if you're out there and you're doing it a bit tough and you know you're not coping, friggin' do something about it, eh? Send me a message. I'll, I'll give you a phone call. I'll give you a ring, fellas, if you're doing it tough. And uh, g'day, Tony. How are you, mate? Yes, Tony, yes. The answer to that, yes. However, I'd rather be bored than be working, mate. Yes, Tony, yes. And you've got to learn how to deal with it, mate. 
everyone goes, oh, I can't wait to retire and that. You do get bored at times. And especially up here, it rains a lot and you can't go out and do things and you kind of get stuck in the house a bit. I do get a little bit stir crazy and I spend too much time on this computer uh, sitting on whatever. But anyway, camping season soon. Speaking of which, I'm taking the camper trailer up to Kenny Hop at Bramston Beach on Wednesday morning. And Kenny's going to check the brakes and just do a quick safety check on the camper, make sure the bearings are okay and all that type of stuff. And um, she's almost camping season. Uh, so we're going to go and do a shake out at Woodley Station. I want to go right out near um, Mount Surprise and that. There's a place out there called O'Brien's Creek. And I want to get and do some camping. I want to get a few good camping trips in before I even get down to the Legends Camp in August. And I said to Roz, come on, let's get out and let's get back into camp. And we've both, I don't know, we, Roz and I, once we get out there, we love it. But we've been a bit slack, so we need to get back into it. Camper trailer there. Got the boat there. Want to get the boat in the water a bit more. But honestly, it's been raining up here. I live in the wettest part of Australia, and it's been a wet season, guys. The bloody rivers are flooding again now. So... We've had, we've had a lot of rain, and it's hard to get out. Is Roz retired too? Yes, Colleen, she is. Roz is retired as well. Uh, Roz hung the boots up when she turned 60, and good on her, and she's enjoying it too. I, I didn't think Roz would. I thought Roz might go back to work once we got back from our, our hobby, but she didn't. And um, as I said, Roz is living on a super, and I live on my army pension, guys. So we've had to tighten the belt. But, hey, listen, in saying that, we're not – you know, we're still bloody – we're getting by, don't get me wrong, but I don't have the extra, you know, when you've got car rego and that, which is due next month for the BT50, you know, at work used to be able to put in for overtime, do a 12-hour overtime shift, and that would go towards your car rego and that, just take a bit of the pressure off. So you don't have that luxury anymore. So, yeah, but it's all good. Going all right. And... I turn 60 in a year's time, guys. So, and then I can tap into my super as well. So, at the moment, I can't, I don't want to hit me super. Um, yeah. So, I recently, uh, out there too, I recently did a men's mental health course, and the statistics are bloody terrible. Yeah. Craig, not good at all, mate. It's not good at all. You know, the, I went to my first autopsy when I was a police officer. Um, they said, go and do it, go and, team up with Dr. Birchley. He's doing an autopsy. He had to be a police officer present back in those days. I don't know if they still do that now. And it was a 30-something year old guy and without going too gory guys, I was watching an autopsy or post-mortem be conducted. Dr. Birch, who's my actual doctor, been my doctor for 20 years. Dr. Birchley used to do the autopsies here in Innisfail and basically cause of death was unknown even though he had a big red mark around his neck. Everyone knew he'd hung himself, but because it was a, a sudden death, they had to conduct a post-mortem and autopsy. And basically, Dr. Birchley cut the body open and then checked the heart and looking for signs of if he had cancer and all that type of stuff, which they do on an autopsy. And I just sat there watching this bloke getting friggin' cut apart like, you know, it's they're not pleasant, guys. And I was just sitting there thinking, you friggin' idiot, mate. Like, I, I felt like, wish I could have rewound re the clock and bloody grabbed him by the grabbed him by the collar and said, friggin' wake up to yourself, mate. Don't do what you're about to do. It's too late then, isn't it? You know, I was there watching him, just this cold body in the mall, getting an autopsy conducted on him. And he's friggin' lying on a cold steel bench, you know, in the nude, getting cut open, and he's got a big bloody rope mark around his neck, and I just thought, you silly, silly bugger, and it, that was over a relationship breakdown too. Anyway, Dr. Birchley just went through the motions and checked his vital organs and all that type of stuff. Didn't didn't do the brain at all, just did the internal organs, and Simon said, no, I've seen enough, mate. I said, we all know, we know how he died, his heart and his all that, and Dr. Birchley was showing me all his organs, picking them up, actually saying, here's his heart, this is his spleen, these are his lungs, and actually showing me. And um, it was, uh, yeah, it was the first time I'd ever seen that, and it was a bit of a bloody, yeah, just sitting there going, shit, this isn't like 
watching a butcher cut a lamb up for dinner. This is the friggin' human body we're talking about. So anyway, that guy there, I just wish I could have rewound the clock and had a chat to that young fellow who's only in his 30s and he was dead, you know, and I've had mates do the same thing. So anyone out there, guys, that's struggling. G'day, Andy, over in the up in the mother country. Hope you're well. If you anyone is even thinking about that shit, make sure you contact me. I'll have a chat with you. Um, I've had a couple of blokes reach out to me on this channel and um, basically said, Buck, you saved me life because of what you did and what you said and all that type of stuff and something I'm very proud of. And if if it if this channel helps one person stay on the rails and not not think about doing anything silly, then it's all been worth it. I don't give a shit what happens. That one thing will be will be worth it. Lugi Reed wants to know about pink, everyone. Now listen, I put some Ros and I went down, we went to the concert last night. First thing I want to say, absolutely fantastic concert. What a performer. What a, you know, like I'm not right into Pink's music, guys. She's got some good songs. But uh, I'm more of a bloody hard rock sort of bloke, you know, a bit of some heavy metal and Metallica. I don't mind all that type of music, heavy metal. But I'll tell you now, Pink's genre, is that the word genre? Would be pop. But I'll tell you what, when you see her in concert with her band, it's bordering, a lot of her songs are bordering on rock, not pop. The, her band was unbelievable last night. She got a lot of backup, but her main band was was a pretty simple band. Had a guitarist who was playing a Gibson Les Paul and was very, very good. Female bass guitarist who was excellent and a black American guy on the drums. That was basically the band and she had a couple of people on keyboards. <coughs> Incredible. Incredible band. So she's not like Ariana Grande and whatever. I don't know about Taylor Swift. A lot of pre-recorded shit. Um, Pink plays with a band, guys. So it's not pre-recorded. She plays with a band. And a lot of people go, oh, Pink's not singing. She's got three very, very good backup singers who can sing just as good as what she does. So that when she's doing all the spinning in the air and uh, waving to the crowd and all that, her backup singers take her, I've noticed... She doesn't sing continuously. Her backup singers take take a bit of the slack slack up for her and do a very very good job. And Pink goes and spins around on the the trapeze and all that type of stuff. But when she does sing, oh my goodness, she is a very very good singer. What a voice! And just an incredible show last night. If anyway, would you go and see it? That's how I judge some. Would I go and see it again? Or like a movie or whatever? Would I go again? If you go, oh, no, it was good, but I wouldn't go again. Well, I'll tell you what, with Pink, I would go and see her in a heartbeat again. She was brilliant. And if you ever get the chance, I'm sure she'll come back to Australia again. If you get a chance to go and watch one of her concerts, do it, guys. It is, She's very, very good. Um, Roz was doing a cut and a few moves. Roz was cutting a few moves last night, guys. Now, I tried to put a couple of videos up on Facebook, and they've just come up as still pictures. So I had one there, um, you know, so why well, I'm a rock star or that her main song. And she was spinning. Anyone seen Spider Cam at the Aussie Rules and the Rugby League where the camera goes over the players and all that? She was like on this Spider Cam cables and was going up around the top of the stadium. Like if those cables snap, she's dead. She's a long way in the air and was just going around the stadium, waving at everyone on these cables. She's like a circus act. Like, she does some amazing stuff, like um, trapeze, like trapeze artists and that type of stuff you see in a circus. She does that. She's obviously, I don't know if she's had a lot of training. Uh, she could perform in a circus, that girl. She's that good. And I'll tell you what, she got no safety nets below. All she's got below her, 50 metres below her is people. And if she, if she has a fall one day, she's going to either be dead or crippled or in a wheelchair. Um, but... Really, really good. Keen Singh. Keen Singh, she was on a bit over two hours, her concert. And her backup was a Aussie girl called Tones and I. You know that uh, um, dance monkey or brass monkey? What was it? That dance monkey, dance monkey? Oh, 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 that song. She sang that and sang uh, Rihanna's song, Diamonds. What a, she is a hidden talent, that one. Tones and I. 
Um, she's got some good songs, and I'll tell you what, in concert, she was very, very good as well. Tones and I, if you ever get a chance to see her, she's a Mornington Peninsula girl from Melbourne. Uh, Frankston, I think. She's from Frankston Girl. And wow, what a what a performer. And even Pink said, I should be supporting her, not the other way around. Pink was very, very impressed with her. And she was good. If you ever get a chance to see Tones and I, that girl can sing. And she's got her husband and brother and sister-in-laws and sisters. And it's a real family affair. And even Pink had, uh, you know, her kids and Kerry, uh, her husband Kerry was there. And um, Pink's young daughter, uh, Willow, came out and sang that uh, Cover Me With Sunshine, that, that song. And fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It was a really good night. Dance Monkey, that's the one, Jared, not Brass Monkey. Dance Monkey, it's a, that's a catchy song. The crowd went off. When she started singing that song, the crowd went off. And they had a DJ there called, um, I forget his name, he was a Yank DJ. And he was getting the crowd fired up before the concert and everything. He did a really, really good job. Played a lot of, he was an American um, DJ, but he played a lot of, uh, Aussie stuff. When Pink come out, Pink's very careful she doesn't swear because she knows she's got a lot of young kids in the audience. I think the the most she swore was she said bullshit once, and even she apologised for saying that. But before Pink come on, the DJ he played he played the Angels. Am I ever going to see your face again? There's like forty thousand people, including young kids, just going, "No way, get fuck, fuck off." And uh, Pink come out and was real worried about swearing in front of the kids. The kids were, they were singing out, no way, get fuck, fuck off to the Angels song. We've all been there and done that. Uh, Bucks karaoke, yeah. So absolute amazing concert. You know what? Um, the, they were saying that injected something like $50 million into the North Queensland economy, into the Townsville economy. Big crowd there last night, way bigger than a football game because – not only were all the stands full, but the the middle, like the, there was just thousands of people in the middle as well, paying like $500 a ticket or whatever. So, you know, and coming down, we were going down to Townsville a couple of days, Friday afternoon, and the ladies at the Carble thing said, my God, we've never had a day like this, never been so busy. I said, everyone going to the Pink concert? She goes, yeah. So a lot of Cairns people, Innisfail, Atherton and Tablelands, and even coming home today, I've never seen so many cars on the Bruce Highway between Townsville and Cairns. Everyone coming home from the Pink concert. So I reckon half of Cairns must have attended. And, you know, a lot of people when that Townsville Stadium got built where the Cowboys played, people were dead set against that. Townsville doesn't need a stadium. Uh, well, have a look. They had Elton John open that stadium up. You don't get a much bigger name in music than Elton John. And now Pink's been there. Kiss was going to play there, but I think the female soccer World Cup and uh, Kiss got booted out of the stadium because the soccer female soccer World Cup was on or something um, when the Matildas were were playing. So Kiss were going to play up here. So it's bringing a lot of money into the economy. It's good for Townsville, and let's hope that other big names like Pink. I mean, she's one of the big names around, isn't she? And she came up to Townsville and she said, "I'm." Um, I'm glad that I just don't do the city. She said, I also do some big country towns in Australia, the Gold Coast and I think Newcastle and whatever. So good on her. Um, and injecting a lot of money. I think she took the family down to Billabong Sanctuary and all that type of stuff. And Pink gets out and with her family and does all the touristy stuff. And Tones and I, you could tell she was red as a beetroot when she was up on stage. She'd been over on Magnetic Island all day with her family uh, doing a touristy thing around Magnetic Island and she got sunburnt. You could see how sunburnt she was on the big screen and that. So, yeah, it was it was good. And you know what? Living up here, we miss out on a lot of that stuff, concerts and all that. And it was good for Townsville. It was good for North Queensland to have a big name like Pink turn up and put a concert on. It was bloody good for Townsville. I don't give a shit. There's a few people out there probably go, oh, the stadium and that. Well, I'll tell you what. When you saw how busy the pubs and the restaurants and, and all the coffee shops and everything were in Townsville over the weekend, like just people everywhere, it was injecting. You know, everyone coming down, there was no accommodation left in Townsville. 
Um, you know, and then everyone who comes down from other towns besides Townsville that don't live in Townsville, spending money on accommodation, food, going out to coffee shops, restaurants and all that. The money that was spent in that town was unbelievable. So it was it was good. Um, she's a lovely human being. She is. And, you know, last night, she's a funny bugger too. It was hot last night. You could see she was, like, it was quite a warm night. Even sitting in the stands, it was quite a warm night. Even though summer's over, it's still bloody warm up here. And Pink was on stage and she goes, my God, my makeup is just melting off me. And you could see it while she was singing on the beat and she was squinting, the sweat was in her eyes. And every now and then she'd run off stage and just let her backup singers sing. And she was bloody, must have had a wet towel and was like towel in her face. So she said, my God, this heat is eating my face, she said at one stage. And then she said, I just had to pull my eyelashes off everyone. Like she must have had fake eyelashes. She goes, one of them come off with a sweat and was I was wearing it as a moustache, she reckons. So she's just got ripped the ripped them off because of the sweat and that that was getting in her eyes. So even she was joking about it. And she said, this is not the place where you just wear, there was all the jackets and that. And I think a lot of the times she said, I ain't wearing this jacket. She just take the glittery jacket off and just throw it. She said, it's too hot up here for these jackets. So she was, she was feeling the heat, but she put an extra show on. She was only going to do one show in Townsville. And she did two and they were both packed out. The stadium was packed out both times. So Great for the region, Comjag. Absolutely, mate. Um, yeah, she tells it how it is. She's a real mum, uh, loves talking about her kids. And she was fantastic with some of the young kids in the audience. There were young kids there, like, and Pink would be talking. And then you'd go, oh, is that for me? And she'd go down into the crowd and they'd pass up a, you know, a little girl. She was 11 or something. She gave Pink a homemade bracelet or something and she gave it to Pink and Pink wore that, and someone gave her a little frog, uh, a little frog handbag, like a Kermit the Frog handbag. And Pink was wearing that around on a song, you know, under her arm. And all the kids were giving her um, some kid <laughs> wanted Pink to sign. Uh, Pink must have heard her. She said, "Can you sign my sick note for my teacher?" And Pink even said, "You what? You want me to sign a sick note?" She goes, "Yeah." So anyway, this note, the security pass it up to Pink, and it's a Big note saying uh, so-and-so is going to be sick on Monday because she went and saw a Pink concert. So Pink actually signed the thing for the teachers. <laughs> said, make sure you give this to the teachers and tell them Pink said you could have the day off school and all that. So she's a real character and she loves the kids. And as I said, she was pretty mindful of her language. She didn't swear and and all that type of stuff. Tones and I uh, said a few swear songs, uh, swear words in her songs, but Pink... I know some of her songs have got the F word in there, but I didn't hear Pink sing it at all. She must put another word in instead of that. But she was very, very careful not to swear because she knew a lot of the crowd there were young kids last night. Um, there were bloody young kids right up to, you know, people older than me there to watching her. So, no, it was fantastic. And if you could have seen her, Rob the Wanderer has seen her. her I wish I could play it on here, guys. I wish... I was going to do it on StreamYard and show you some of the clips that I filmed last night, but as soon as I do it, they copyright me, and, and I, so I can't do it. But and then I tried to put them on Facebook, and that didn't work either. They just come up as a still photo. But that last bit, Rob, when she goes, um, "So what? I'm still a rock star," like one of her big songs, and you just see how high she goes in the air, and just going around the whole stadium, like spider cam on the on these wires and if one of them wires snaps she's dead it's as simple as that she's not just off the ground she's up at the top of the stadium right up at the top going around waving she come past our grandstand and everyone like almost at eye level with us we were right up in the nosebleed section waving at her and she was like eye level with us just incredible so and she's been doing it for the last few concerts all that type of stuff she's a bit of a daredevil uh landy smurf said pink's the best celebrity when it comes to being kind down to earth uh let's hope she moves to australia she said that last night she said i was going to move to australia i heard that she was eyeing off some land at coffs harbour don't know if that's true or not she loves australia and covid stuffed it up for her she said i think she was seriously considering moving to australia when covid hit 
So maybe circumstances have changed now. And I don't care whether you like her or not, guys. Last time she was here, I think, was during the 1920, the 19, 2020, remember the bad bushfires that I've gone on about? She was just horrified at the bushfires last time she was out here. She donated $250,000 to the bushfire appeal last time she was here. Quarter of a million dollars. I know she probably, you know, oh, she's worth $200 million. Well, she donated $250,000 to the bushfire appeal because she was that upset with, and she loves Australia. She even said it, this is my second home. And um, uh, she's got a European concert on later in the year, August or whatever. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw her move to Australia one day. She loves it down here. She really does. Uh, they showed her in towns all the other day. She was in the city somewhere. And she's there and she goes, where are the crocodiles? All she wanted to do was see a crocodile. And uh, I don't know if they took her down to Billabong Sanctuary, which put on a really good crocodile show. But hopefully she got down to, to see all that type of stuff. So, And her husband, Kerry... Kerry Hart, is it? He, he was, um, wasn't he a crusty demon or something? Wanderer? Kerry? He was a very up there motorcycle rider, not a racing rider. I think he was one of like a crusty demons doing the backflips, a big motocross type. He was real uh, big on the thing. Another quick pink story. Last time she was here, when she started her concerts in Brisbane, she flew into Cairns with her husband, Kerry, and they rode motorbikes from Cairns to Brisbane before her first concert. She wanted to ride down the length of Queensland on a motorbike. She did it, and she stopped here in Innisfail, stopped in a little um, shop coming into town called Newman's Store, and she walked in, and the bloke's in there, and she goes, excuse me, um, do you have a toilet I could use, please? She goes, I'm busting to go to the toilet. And the bloke said, yeah, yeah, I've got a toilet out the back here and thing. And anyway, she's... Apparently said, thanks very much, and blah, 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 and they took off again on the motorbike. And then his wife come back. She'd been out shopping or something, and he goes, I think Pink just came in. She goes, what are you talking about? She goes, this girl that looked like Pink with an American accent, she was riding a motorbike, just came in and asked if she could use the toilet. Anyway, it was in the paper the next day. Pink stopped in Innisfail to use the shitter. So that was our claim to fame for Pink, is that she stopped here and went to the toilet in Innisfail. But uh, imagine that, being in a little shop and then Pink walks in to ask if she can use the toilet. So, yeah. And apparently um, someone, when she's not Pink, she's a, her name's Alicia Moore is her real name. People go, excuse me, are you Pink? And she goes, no, not today. I'm Alicia today. She's very careful to try and separate Pink from Alicia Moore and her family type stuff, which I guess you've got to do when you're a famous person. But even in Australia and that saw her going into uh, kids' hospitals and saying good day to the kids and all that type of stuff, she does a good job. Unlike Taylor, who just came in and did Sydney and Melbourne, flew in, flew out, did nothing except bloody make a squillion dollars. Pink brings her whole family here, has a family holiday, and actually spends months in the country doing tours everywhere. So not only the big city, she goes to some regional places, and she went to Townsville. And she said, I've been wanting to come to Townsville because she's obviously ridden the motorbike through Townsville. She said, I she said, I always wanted to come back here to Townsville. And she said, I, I came back and did a concert. And hopefully she'll, when she comes to Australia again, she'll do Townsville again. I'm sure she will because she sold out two nights uh, at the stadium. Um, yeah, Pink's been here for several months now. Yes, she has. It's not just a, a whizzing and whatever, but she flew out of Townsville last night. Uh, she left straight to the airport and private jet and flew into Sydney, got into Sydney about one o'clock this morning. Roz was stalking her on uh, plane tracker or whatever it's called, and it had Pink's plane. And I don't know, she must be flying back home surely now. Um, <laughs> ZZ Top, give yourself an uppercut. Uh, yeah, she did. She wasn't real keen on the heat, but, mate, she uh, she said the heat is killing me up here. And uh, when she come on stage and that, she had uh, she said, my makeup. She, what did she say? She goes, my God, my my face is eating it tonight. Like, as in, she said, it's eating this heat. And she said, all the makeup and that. She said, it's just melting off me. And she had to go off stage a few times and w wipe her face with a wet towel and all that. And you could see it during some of the songs. You know, when sweat gets in your eyes and stings like buggery, she was like squinting. You could see her on the big 
screen. And then next minute, you know, she'd be off stage and the lead singer, the backup singers would be singing and Pink had come back on. She must have, must have had to go off and bloody, because you could see the sweat just dripping off her last night. But anyway, she did a fantastic thing. If you don't like Pink, you've probably not enjoyed the last 20 minutes because that's all I've been talking about. But I give her a double thumbs up, guys. She was fantastic. Rob the Wanderer's seen her. My daughter saw her last time she was out over in Perth and she said, Dad, Pink's very good. She is absolutely, absolutely really good. So, nah, she's a, and she's a bloody champion. You know, you get a lot of the, the big stars bit up themselves and all that. Pink's, she's down to earth. She's still very grounded and she's joking last night about she had to take her earpiece out. She said, "My," she said, "I've got an earpiece in, guys, so they can hear their own voice or something." Uh, you see a lot of them do it. It must be something they have to have when they're up on stage. <coughs> she said, "All I can hear is a waterfall." She goes, "I've got that much sweat in my ear." She said, "I can't hear shit." And like she took it out and she got a uh, tissue. She said, "Anyone got a tissue?" And she got a tissue and was wiping her ear out so she could put the um, the hearing aid thing back in. And she said, all I could hear was a waterfall because of the amount of sweat in my ear. And then she joking about, she said, if I get any tissue stuck in my ear, I know we've got lots of mums in the crowd. She said, I know all your mums will be carrying tweezers in your in your purse and all that type of stuff. She's always making mum jokes and, and all that type of stuff. She's pretty proud of being a mum. And I tell you what, she must have been wild in her younger days because she always talking about getting into fights. And um, her dad used to teach her how to fight. I think she was a bit of a tomboy back in a day, and a lot of her, even a lot of her songs about talk about getting into fights and all that. She used to joke about it. She said she got arrested once when she was 13 for singing out somewhere. She must have been busking or something, and the police arrested her. She goes, can you believe that, that they arrest a 13-year-old girl for singing? She goes, that's America for you. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably why she probably wants to move out here to Australia. She's She's... I saw her on a uh, Ellen DeGeneres interview and she was talking about Australia and she said, Aussie people are just, she said, it's just how America should be. She said, they just call it as it is. They, they just, they're just good people. She said, and uh, I think that's why she wants to move out here because she can see that it's probably like America 20 years, 20 years ago type thing, you know? So anyway, uh, she performed in Newcastle. Uh, one of my employees' wives dragged him along to see her, and he enjoyed it. Yeah, you will. Even if you don't like her music, guys, just the just the performance and the stage show and the fireworks going off and the the musicians are unbelievable. Like it's it wasn't just poppy music. Like that guitarist, he could have made it in a he could have gone in and played in Metallica. He was that good. He was a very very world-class guitarist the bass guitarist did a, a when she's introducing her band later in the night and they do a bit of a solo the girl on the bass my god you should have heard her and the uh, black american drummer he was unbelievable i was watching him on the big screen and boy oh boy what a he was very very good she surrounds herself with very very good musicians and good backup singers and good dancers, like professional dancers and all that type of stuff. Very, very professional show. It was almost not like watching a circus or whatever, but it was very entertaining. It wasn't just her up on stage. She does rocky, poppy stuff, and then in the middle she does her slower songs where she sits on the piano and tells a few stories and all that about her dad who's passed away, and it was good. It was really good. Jack said, I forgive you. Jack, you'd even you would like Pink, mate, if you went and watched her in concert. I think you'd appreciate just how good she is and what a great singing voice she has. I thought it might have been a bit pre recorded uh, watching it, but it's not because I've seen some stuff on Facebook and you think, she's not singing. When you get to the thing, you realise that she's got three backup singers. So when you see mute, you can hear her singing or you can hear singing, it's her backup singer singing because it's probably hard for her to be spinning around on a trapeze and and singing properly. So, <coughs> yeah. No, it was good. Rob, I know what you meant about the um, the little pillars where she they stop and she stands on the pillar, and one of them, she they brought her in like at a great rate of knots, and they must stop her. She did a handstand, and she was like doing 
handstand push-ups on this little silver thing, and she's just been a been a bit of a, a dick on that one. She's she's a funny bugger. She is takes the piss out of herself a lot too. But when she was flying around the stadium on this like spider cam thing, I was just thinking, my God, like she's got no fear of heights, that's for sure. Because I tell you what, if one of them things uh, snaps, she's dead. She got no safety net or anything under her. Her safety net is the crowd. <laughs> I'm sure they try and uh, try and catch it. No, Jack, you'd you'd enjoy Pink, mate. She's very, very good, um, very talented person. And Tones and I, if you ever get a chance to see her, I think. Hey, listen, next time I go live on Streamyard, I'm doing some giveaways. Why does my nose get itchy? I know it's Rob the Wanderer. You were scratching your nose the other night too on yours, and I'm thinking it must be a YouTube thing. When you go live on YouTube, your nose gets itchy. I don't know what it is. So I've got some Townsville Chiefs giveaways. We've got a tracksuit top. These are 3XL, guys. So for the bigger guys, tracksuit top, Townsville Chiefs with all the sponsors on, Sibley Lawyers, tracky top there. We've got a training singlet for someone, 2XL. Not a bad looking singlet, is it? Number 24. Few of the sponsors on the back and a Townsville Chiefs hoodie. I'm going to give these away, guys. This is um, Chiefs. Sibley Lawyers. So they're going to be giveaways. They're going to be giveaways on the next next time I do a stream yard, maybe next week or something. Um, so, yeah, I'll give those away. So if you're about my size... Bit bigger guys, um, you got a chance to win those. Winner time coming up, that hoodie will be good for winner. So I've got a heap of hoodies. Uh, I, they'll just sit in the cupboard and won't get used. So I thought I might as well bloody. My ears are ringing, and I think it's from the concert last night. <coughs> it was pretty loud, but it was good. Um, Gail and, and Jack saying to go to each other, hope you are both well. Gail and Jack, I hope you're both well. And Ivan and Lisa, if you are watching, I got your patch the other day, and it's up in the BT50. Sorry, I forgot to thank you for that. I've been out of business for a while. How long have I been? 52. We'll go for an hour, right? Eh? Um, yeah, so next live feed, got some giveaways there. Anyway, and I'm not going to let anything out of the bag yet because me and Gigi could have some very, very good news soon. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to wait till it's locked in but we could have some good news coming for everybody so we'll see how we go um one week until fire season in new south wales yeah so everyone now listen when are you mexicans off daylight savings for goodness sake it's bloody 137 on it must be the end of the month is it you must be bloody getting ready to get back in line with the best state in australia queensland and this daylight saving sucks when you're trying to do live feeds and you've got to come on an hour earlier so that, because, um, you know, all you guys have got to go to bed at 8 o'clock. Um, daylight savings, kills, sort yourself. <laughs> Rob, I'm with you, Rob, on this one. Daylight saving kills us. I oh, know, bloody Rob was doing some of his live feeds at 5.30 and that because his go that long. Uh Phil was live last night, was he? Phil the Maniac. I did not see that because I was, you know, where I was last night. Uh, Phil the Maniac, sorry, mate, but Pink wins out over that one, over watching you live. <laughs> no, it was um, good. I, was, I wouldn't take that one. I'll tell you what, the worst part about it was trying to get home, trying to get out of the car park. We must have been an hour, I'm not exaggerating, an hour trying to get out of where we, the car park we were parked in. It took us an hour to get out, guys, because of the traffic. It was mayhem in Townsville City last night. But at the end of the day, everyone had had a great night. No one was in a rush. We we ended up going to bloody McDonald's on the way home at midnight and grabbing something to eat because we hadn't eaten. And um, we, we had Maccas at midnight last night. And even the drive through at McDonald's was a kilometre long. It was ridiculous. Once again, all because of the pink concert. So I was injecting a lot of money into that town last night. Uh, they estimate up to $50 million injected into Townsville last night because of that co the two nights of the concert. 
incredible. So let's hope some more big names come to Townsville and, and do a concert there because it's a nice stadium. It's a beautiful stadium to watch a concert at as well. Good facilities there. They're here and uh, all the volunteers, they'll just pass some water bottles out into the crowd and that because it was so hot. Uh, you know, we could walk down the stairs and go out the back and there was bars and food, easy access to toilets and all that type of stuff. So it was very, very well set up. Uh, is it like you go into the footy? Bit worst thing is it's a rugby leagues thing, so the grandstands are quite steep, and there were some older people that were struggling getting up the top because they were because uh, it's a square oval, a, a square oval, a square field. Um, the bloody you're up in the nosebleed looking down, and you get a wonderful view, but getting up there for some of the older people, it's not easy. Um, yeah, the car park weight is part of the experience. Yeah, I know. Um, there was a bar open. Uh, I said to Ros, let's go to the bar and have a drink. Ros said, no, no, we'll try and get out of here. Well, we probably could have had a dozen beers at the bar by the time the the um, <laughs> the traffic settled down a bit so we could get out. It was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Um, oh, Shane, I'm going to talk about that now. Who's... Is Brisbane ready for the Olympics? They showed the stadium that they're going to run the athletics at. It looked like something you'd see here in Innisfail. I, I reckon Palaget is just... I don't reckon Brisbane's ready for these games, guys. I honestly think Tracy Wickham come out the other day and said Brisbane's going to embarrass Australia. Hand, hand the games over to Sydney for Christ's sake. Otherwise, Brisbane, you're going to embarrass the country. And I'm kind of starting to think that maybe, you know... They're going to refurbish the Gabba. Now, here we go again, talking about Australian tradies and, and all this type of shit. They did a quote to refurbish the Gabba. Billion dollars, as if that's not enough. Within months, it had blown out to 3.2 billion. And now they haven't got the money to do it. See what I mean? Like, this country is just... No, nah, I'm going to do a poll, guys. How do I do a poll? I forget. Here we go. Start a poll. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Will. Hope I didn't misspell that. Will Brisbane be ready for the games in 2032? Let us know what you reckon. I'm starting to have my doubts. I'm starting to have my doubts as whether Brisbane will be ready. We ran the um, we ran the. Where, where's the Olympic Village going to be? I haven't been really following it. Where's the Olympic Village? Are they building a brand new Olympic Village, or are they? I don't know. I mean, we ran the Commonwealth Games at the Gold Coast not long ago, but apparently now they're targeting some little athletic stadium. They reckon it's going to be the smallest athletics facility. Since 1896, when the Olympics first started, it's going to be the smallest stadium for the, like, that's the stadium. You, you remember when Kathy Freeman won her 400 metres, the size of um, Homebush Stadium, it was called then, that Sydney had. And Brisbane's going to refurbish this pissy little thing that holds about 10,000 people. Like, you're kidding. Yeah, exactly right. Traffic will be a shambles in Brisbane. The traffic there will be an absolute shambles. Things will grind to a halt. It'll be, I don't know. I just don't think Brisbane's ready for it. I don't think Brisbane's ready for it. And Tracy Wickham come out and said, give it to Sydney. They did it 20 years ago, 24 years ago. And it was one of the best Olympics ever. I don't know if Brisbane, I don't know if Brisbane's ready for it, guys. I'd hate to be the new... LMP bloke, what's his name? Crucifoli or whatever. If they win the next election and then he has to take over the Olympic Games, which was bid for by the Labor government, and then they did all the, the costing and funding, which is just blowing out. Blow, as I said, the Gabba, the Gabba refurbishment's blowing out from a billion to $3.2 billion in months, in a matter of months. The, they must just go to a company. Oh, mate, how much to refurbish the Gabba? Yeah, a billion dollars, mate. And then when it comes down and actually crunch the numbers, it blows out to 3.2 billion. What a load of shit. 
Our current po politicians couldn't organise a piss up in a brewery. Exactly right, Pete. And we, without going down that rabbit hole, they're letting this country down, all of them. This is the worst crop of politicians I've ever seen in my life at the moment. They are letting this country down in a lot of different ways. The cost of living, defence, you name it, they're letting the country down. It's a friggin... I've never been so worried about my country as what I am at the moment. I'll tell you, now, someone said the other day, oh, you friggin' whinge all the time. All you do now, Bucks, whinge. Well, if whinge, if if what worrying about the state of your defence force is whinging, all right, I'm whinging. But um, we just can't get anything right. This nuclear submarine deal's already starting to show cracks because the Yanks are starting to, might be reneging on these nuclear submarines. And, oh, my God, it just doesn't stop. <coughs> yeah, so we had the Olympics. We had 24 years. Yeah, 24 years ago, mate. We got uh, Frank, uh, Paris. Who's got the one between Paris and Brisbane? Paris is this year. And then 2028, there's another one. And then Brisbane in 2032. Not that far away. Uh, I don't know. Lukey, Kaz is crook again, guys, and hasn't been well. He went on a cruise and come back. He's shitting blood again and all this. That poor bugger, he got some big medical problems, guys. He really has. Um you know, and he, but he's, I've never seen a guy who's got a lot of medical issues and they are not self-inflicted either. They are, Kaz still maintains, he picked up some sort of virus or bug when he was in East Timor and the army, the army wouldn't accept it and all that type of stuff. But he said ever since then, he's been shitting blood and whatever loses feeling in his arms and all this type of stuff and ends up in hospital. Not good at all. And um, poor buddy, he always keeps he always keeps um, keeps positive. Kaz, um, I'll give him that. He's a buddy. He always tries to look on the positive side of things. So anyway, Kaz, if you do see this, I hope you're well, mate. I hope you. I think you've been through the wars, mate. Recently, you really have uh, with your health, and it's bloody terrible. Ah, Milton said, okay. Milton Brady said Los Angeles has got the next ones. Okay, they had. Los Angeles last had the Olympics in 1984, remember? 84 Olympics in, in LA, and the Yanks are running them again in 2028. Oh, okay, I didn't realise that, Milton. So the Yanks have got the next one in 2028. French have got this one this year. Then the Yanks and then the Aussies. Boy, oh, boy. You know, the Yanks will put on a good show in LA. Let's hope. Oh, gee, I don't know. I just... I just, we always used to say, Aussies are the best. We can do anything. We're the best at doing this. And Aussie manufacturing and blowing wind up our own ass. Well, guess what? Recently, it's become apparent that this country is struggling to do basic things well. And I'll give you an example. Building roads is one of them. We've had a lot of heavy rain. You should see the potholes between Townsville and Cairns. Friggin' disgraceful. An absolute disgrace. I miss one today by centimetres, and it, I reckon if I went in it, it would have ripped the front off Ros's car. It was that deep and big. The potholes between Townsville and Cairns are off tap at the moment. We just can't even build a road properly anymore. We can't build a road that so that can survive one wet season up here. Just potholes everywhere. There's a roundabout in town here. And they, the council's down there for about the fourth time in a row now, fourth week in a row, patching potholes on this roundabout. Instead of digging it up, doing the job at night so they don't uh, affect schools, you know, school runs in the morning and that, do it at night, dig it up, and do it properly. Four weeks in a row now, down there with the bloody, what's that, the hot, the hot tar ship? Shovel her in, pat her down. And the next time she rains, out she comes again and they go down and have another go. And it's just, we can't get basic things right in this country anymore. We can't do simple shit right. Can't even build a car here anymore. You know what I mean? And we're going to try and run an Olympics. Every time we try and, everything we do, there's cost blowouts. We build a building and the cost of the building blows out. 
we get a defence acquisition and it blows out by double or triple the cost of the original cost because we can't get things right. It's just, I've got my doubts now. I don't like knocking this country, but I just think we've forgotten how to do basic shit properly. I know what, COVID took everyone's common sense away, I'm sure of it. People can't seem to do anything properly anymore. Our politicians, it doesn't matter what it is. Unions got you, well, I know. There's a lot of people out there, unions and this and unions that. Unions are the ones who kept pushing for high wages for the last 30 years. We want higher wages. We want higher wages. Well, guess what that's done? It's killed manufacturing in this country. Higher wages has killed that, and that's what's led to the cost of living, is everyone demanding higher wages. And my old man was calling it 30, 40 years ago. Be careful what you wish for, people. When you're all wanting bloody, everyone's wanting, every year, everyone wants a pay rise. Everyone wants a pay rise. Well, guess what? It's caught up on us and the cost of living's now out of control. Snowy 2.0 is a massive joke. Snowy 1 was the best engineering successes in history, uh, not just Australian history. I know the Snowy River scheme, which is where a lot of the immigrants came out of the Italians and the Greeks and I um, mean, mate, Pap, his dad came out and worked on the, the Snowy Hydro scheme. Apparently, that the cost of Snowy 2.0 has blown out by billions and billions. And they're talking now about nuclear. nuclear. Um, once again, I'm not any having nuclear power stations, guys. I'm probably, I'm probably for it, but... I've got my doubts as to whether this country can support a nuclear infrastructure. I don't think we've got the know-how. I don't think we've got the know-how on how to build nuclear power stations and maintain them properly. I just don't think we've got the nous. We are frigging useless. As I said, we can't run a chook raffle at the moment. Here we go. I'm going to end the poll, and then I'm going to do another one. Where's that poll? Here we go. Will Brisbane be ready to host the games? 91% say no. I don't think we are either. I'd like to think we are. I'd love to I'd love to think that Brisbane and Queensland would pull off the best Olympics ever. I don't think it's going to happen, guys. I don't think I don't know. I just think we're leaving everything to the last minute. We still haven't even started renovating the Gabba, haven't started renovating this uh stadium that's supposed to house the the, the athletics, which is the main part of the Olympics, let's let's face it, the athletic side of it is the main part of the Olympics. You know, when it gets to the the relays and the hundred meter sprints and all that type of stuff, that's where that's the main part of the Olympics. The javelin, the shot put, and four by one hundred meters and all that type of stuff. And apparently, they're going to do up some little country bloody um, uh, where is it? Somewhere in Brisbane, some little backyard bloody athletics track and try and turn it into an Olympic thing. We haven't even started on it yet. Better hurry up. And then, as I said, the cost keeps blowing out. Oh, it's going to cost you a billion. And the next thing it's 3.2 billion. Where's the money coming from? Olympics needs to be on a budget, but we can't embarrass ourselves on the world stage. Exactly right, Stolzy. We We can't. I mean, we've got to we've got to do it on a budget, but it needs to be. You know, the world going. <laughs> the Aussies have a look at that. Look like something you'd run. It looked like a high school bloody athletics carnival in in the United States. That was the standard of it. The Olympics need to be up there, and that's what makes me wonder now how much the Olympics is going to. Will it continue on? There's a lot of countries out there just can't afford to run the Olympics. You're just going to have America and some of the big. Big nations, China and that may be running the Olympics. Um, Simon then said, Buck, I think Australia knows more about nuclear than we think. Well, I hope so, mate. I hope I hope you're right. But I've got my doubts. I've got a lot of doubts about this country now and, and our capability to do anything properly. And that includes a chook raffle, mate. We are useless. Absolutely useless. Our manufacturing's crumbling. Uh, I'd, I'd hate to think where we're going to be when mining, when mining, you know, they all want to see the end of coal. Uh, careful what you wish for. Coal and iron ores, what's keeping our head above water at the moment? 
what are we going to do then? Can't rely on manufacturing. We just don't do it anymore. We don't do it anymore. So I don't know. Once mining, you know, once iron ore, you like to think iron ore is going to continue on forever. Coal's, coal's days are numbered, aren't they? Uh, how long's coal got to go? I do not know. But anyway, I'm going to run another poll. Running. Nuclear. Oh, that's not how you spell nuclear, you dickhead. A nuclear program. When I say this, I'm not talking about nuclear nuclear submarines, guys. The Yanks are going to teach us how to do that. And the British, I'm talking about nuclear power stations. I know we've got one at Lucas Heights, but that's that's a medical sort of thing. I think that's a whole new ball game when you're running nuclear facilities to power cities and that. Do we have the capability to do that? Do we have the people with the know-how in nuclear? Maybe we should have started. Maybe we should have started thirty years ago or twenty years ago, and starting to tap into the the British and the American nuclear industries and that. But this uh, this nuclear thing not going to happen overnight, is it? They reckon it's going to be an expensive, an exp expensive at first to get it up and running. But uh, I just don't know. I don't know. Hey, here we go. People are saying 60% say yes at the moment. It's dropping down. We'll give that five minutes and see how that goes. I'd like to think the answer is yes. I don't know if it is. I don't know if we have the case. Simon's, Simon there saying that um, we know more than what we think. I hope you're right, mate. Um, yeah, Simon saying there, Buck, I think Australia knows more about nuclear than we think. I hope you're right there, Simon. I really do. Um you know, maybe a nuclear power station to power our big cities might be the way to go. Um, I just hope that we have the know-how on how to build them, how to maintain them, and then what we do with it afterwards. Um, you got to put that shit somewhere. And South Australia, <laughs> I think you're going to be the ones getting lumbered with it, uh, burying it at the end of its days and all that type of stuff. Um isn't nuclear not allowed in Australia, Landy? Um, nuclear weapons aren't, mate. No, and our nuclear submarines will not be. They'll be conventionally armed, mate, which means they'll have normal torpedoes, Tomahawk missiles and all that with no nuclear weapons. So if we get these submarines, they will be nuclear powered. They will not be nuclear armed. We are not allowed to own nuclear weapons, Australia. Um, I'm quite surprised that the world allowed us to even have nuclear submarines. But anyway, um, we, we're getting them if the Yanks can stick to it. So 360 something billion dollars over 30 years to get these new... That's the other thing I'm worried about too. We're going to try and build these nuclear submarines here in Australia. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. What could possibly go wrong there? Dear, oh dear. Anyway, we know we had some huge problems. That'll be cost blowouts that 300 and something billion will blow out to 500 or 600 billion you watch everything we do which involved with defense is a blowout budget blowout it happens all the time so um yeah what else did i have to talk about any questions guys before i go let me know i've been going an hour 13 um g'day older is optional older what jack Jack's in a conversation. 25, 30 years to develop it if we start now. Tim Ryan saying nuclear. I'll probably be dead by the time we see nuclear power stations in this country. Um, the way the LNP is going on, we're going to have them. We're going to have them next by next election or some bloody thing. Um, Brad and Denise, nuclear for Australia. Okay, that might be the way to go. Renewables, um, they reckon, who knows with hydro and, and uh, not hydro, what's the one where you run cars? I'll tell you the other thing that's not, not going to work. Electronic four-wheel drives. Isuzu D-Max are bringing out electronic and electric ute. How do you reckon that's going to go, guys? 
How do you reckon that's going to go? And I'm going to talk about that now. The Bradfield scheme. Isn't the Bradfield scheme the one that comes down from northern Australia and, and irrigates the whole of inland Australia? Is that the Bradfield scheme? Once again, my dad, simple man, 40 years ago, I remember dad sitting there. We need to do something about water in this country. We need to start piping it down from up north. And we're still not doing it. We keep talking of the Bradfield scheme, I think, is to do piping pipe and water down from northern Australia, piping it through central Australia, like Israel. Israel pipe it inland and, um, you know, turn desert into bloody uh, agriculture and all that type of stuff. Plug-in hybrid like the Ford. I've got nothing against hybrids. I think hybrids, there's merit in hybrids, but full electric, I don't know. Lucky if that D-Max will do 400 kilometres, Jack. Yeah, well, what happens when you throw your caravan on the back, mate? How how far is it going to go then? And this is what I was saying to Ros on the way home. You pull into a servo out here in country, you know, northern rural Australia. I haven't seen any electric bloody fuel pumps getting, you know, when you pull into a servo. Has anyone seen where you pull in now and there's a row of electric ones? We haven't even started. Every servo I've been to is just diesel and fuel and unleaded. Where, where's all the electric charging stations out here? You, like, if I drive from Innisfail to Mount Isa, I can stop at towns, pull into a servo and refuel and throw diesel in and get all around Australia. Where's all the electric charging stations? This town of Innisfail's got one that I know of, and it's across from BCF. One. One. So what happens when everyone's driving electric vehicles on the highway and it's got to pull over and none of these service stations on the highways and that have got electric charging stations? Maybe they're doing it down around Melbourne and sit. I don't know. But I'll tell you now, up here in, in rural northern Australia, the servos have got no electric charging shit. Where are you going to charge your, your D-Max Ute up, people? It's absolute bullshit. We are 20 years away from being, having electric four-wheel drives and being able to drive. What do you do if you want to go and do the Simo in one, the Simpson Desert? Or when someone can do the um, Canning stock route in an electric four-wheel drive, I will shut my mouth. There you go. The day that a ute can do the Canning stock route, an electric ute can do the Canning stock route, I'll shut my mouth and I'll tell everyone how good I think electric is. <coughs> I'll be dead before that happens. It'll probably never happen. Well, anyone else see anyone? I'm going to do close this poll. Uh, is Australia capable of running a nuclear program? There you go. 64% say yes. 36%. I hope we are. I hope we are. I, I don't know. I'm no expert in. I didn't really study nuclear energy at school, guys. In my 10 years at school, I didn't really go into nuclear stuff. Maybe we've got the maybe we've got the know-how how to do it. I hope so. But um, John Cadogan, uh, great channel for EV debunking this. Yeah, he's not a fan of him. He's a very knowledgeable guy. Uh, John Cadogan. I wish he'd I wish he'd try and stop being so funny and all the bullshit he I wish he'd just get to the point sometimes. He I don't know. There's a he comes across as a bit of a wanker sometimes, John Cadogan. He's a very knowledgeable man, very knowledgeable man. I just wish he'd get rid of all the bullshit out of his channel and, and whatever and just just say things as they are. Uh, but, yeah, I, I do like watching his channel. Very good. So, anyway, there you go. Last poll of the night, guys, I promise. Last poll. Start a poll. Oh, hang on. And. Rob did this hour. Start a poll. Will electric, will electric four-wheel drives work in the next 20 years? When I say work, 
will we will we be able to use them in this country like we use like my BT50? Can I hook the camper trailer up and do a Central Australia trip, or go down to the Legends Camp in August, or go down to Jarvis Bay and go camping with my thing if I've got an electric four wheel drive unit? Say I'll go and buy one of these new D Max EVs. Can I do that? Can I tow my camper trailer and go all over Australia? I'm not talking about the Canning Stock route now. I'm talking about just driving around this country and going to camping spots. Will I be able to do it in the next 20 years? We'll see how we go. I, I just don't think we're ready. Once again, the government's going on about this Chris Bowen going on about, and they want to start charging extra money and extra taxes if you want to go and buy a diesel ute and all this type of stuff. Assholes. All good and well to do that. But you've got to have the infrastructure in place so that people can do what they want to do with an electric vehicle. And at the moment, you can't tow a caravan all around Australia or a camper trailer and go to all these camping destinations, get up to the Kimberley with your off-road caravan and all that. You can't do that. You can't do it because there's nowhere to charge your frigging vehicles out here in rural Australia. If you're in Melbourne and Sydney and you see charging stations everywhere, it's not like that in the rest of Australia, guys. It's not like that out in the country. We've got one electric charger in this town. People going to Cape York. Can you imagine the convoy of vehicles coming through Innisfail on their way to Cape York and they're all in electric vehicles? Where are they going to charge their vehicles when they come through Innisfail when you've got one station sitting there to charge 200 vehicles a day? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Absolute bullshit. If you want to bring electric vehicles in and start mandating that you know, you've got to have an electric vehicle and all this type of shit, You've got to have all the infrastructure in place to support it before you start bloody pinging people for wanting to buy a diesel vehicle. And that's what um, Sean Owen and Graham or Four Wheel Drive 24-7 having a big say about it. And watch that one. They speak very well on it, Graham and Sean, and, and just how it's bullshit. Tradies and all that, you know, needing a, a, a ute. I don't know. I don't. It's just not going to work. What's a twin a twin cat electric Ute going to cost? Well, there are a lot. We all know electric vehicles now are a lot dearer than their bloody petrol counterpart. You know, if you buy a little Mazda two, it might cost you twenty something thousand. The EV is thirty five thousand for an, for an, a similar type little little car. And apparently, the batteries are only good for eight to ten years. And then it's almost the cost of the car again to replace the battery. Come on. Can anyone not see this? Well, the government obviously can't. The politicians obviously can't. Um, where, where's all the, Jack said, where's all the power going to come from to charge all the cars? It's not going to happen in my lifetime. I can't see it happening, guys. Can you? 90, 80%, 80 of you is now uh, saying what I think is that you won't be able to... I'd like to see the 20% that voted yes. Where it, Guys, we're talking about getting out of... Grant's on. We're talking about getting out of... I'm not talking about driving from inner Sydney to the northern beaches of Sydney to go camping, guys. I'm talking about driving from Innisfail out to central bloody Northern Territory to go on a three-week camping trip like I did in 2018. And do the Marini Loop, the Great Red Way from Alice Springs all the way around through Kings Canyon, Ormiston Gorge, Ellery Creek, and, and all these beautiful canyons and gorges on the way out. And then get to Uluru and Katajuda. And then have to make it all the way back up the, um, the Stewart Highway, all the way back up uh, to the three ways. And then turn right at the three ways and then make it all the way to the Barclay Homestead to refuel, and then from Barclay Homestead, try and get all the way through to Mount Isa. There's a lot of nothing out there, let me tell you. Where are you going to charge your electric vehicles out there? Dear, oh, dear. Steam-powered cars. We might be running around in nuclear cars, which nuclear causes steam, if you didn't know. Nuclear energy causes steam, so we might have little mini-nuke cars. How about that? Little mini 
Imagine a nuclear-powered BT-50, how fast that'd go. Speaking of which, Nutty took me for a ride in his Ford Raptor yesterday. Yeah, yesterday morning. Uh, Nutty, I said, come on, give me a drive, uh, take me for a spin. I didn't drive it. And we just did a lap around. And, oh, what a beautiful vehicle, the Ford, Nutty's Ford Raptor. And you give it a little squirt. I'll tell you what, they got some go. They got some get up and go, those things. They really have. And um, he... He was sitting on 60 before I knew it and uh, put me back in my seat. And um, apparently you can get the big Ford, Ford um, like the Dick Johnson tune up on him and gives him even more bloody get up and go. Yes, I took the poo kit down to Nutty and he appreciated. I gave him my army and trenching tool and a shit kit so that he can have a shit on the side of the road now out in the middle of nowhere between the mine and, and Townsville. He's got a lot. Once again... Electric vehicle. I love to see Nutty try and do that in an electric vehicle. Getting that distance that he has to get out to the mines. Seven-hour drive. He, he drives for an hour and a half, gets a little town called Claremont. And then the next town's Charters Towers. And there's a one road, one service station um, between Charters Towers and Claremont called Ballyando Crossing. There's a lot of nothing out there, guys. Ballyendo Crossing ain't got any electric charging stations. Let me tell you, I was only there not long ago, last year. I didn't see any EV charging ports at Ballyendo service station. So where, where are we charging these electric utes and that if we want to go out west? Heron, Heron, Gigi said the Heron uh, upgrade. Or Herod, sorry. Herod upgrade, yeah. Which is like what the Dick Johnson cars and all that get. Apparently you can get the Herod upgrade. And Ken's mate, Mick, at the Early Beach Hotel has got a Raptor that's had the Herod upgrade on it. And Ken said it absolutely flies. So um, Nutty doesn't need that on his. I think uh, the Raptor that Nutty's got, it's got more than enough power for a young fella. Um, yeah, Brad and Denise, EVs have got their purpose, but only within city limits. Well, I can, I can, and I've said this before, if you're a person, you just live in the city, you work in the city, I could see where electric vehicles will do the job for you. No worries at all. I'm talking about towing long distances in rural Australia. I'm not talking about the cities. I couldn't give a shit about the cities to tell you. If you haven't guessed, I hate big cities. And I'll never, the only time I go to them is uh, I go there and then I'll get out of them. Um, got no intentions ever living in a big city ever again, guys. I'm talking about a lot of Australians who tow blokes like Jack Turtle in Harvey Bay if he wants to go on a big trip. People who want to go up to Cape York. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's any electric charging stations north of Cairns. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's not. i will just about put money on that one. Once you get north of Cairns, have fun trying to find an EV charging station. And it's not like you can throw your 200-watt solar panels out and charge her up in an hour. No, they take a lot of power to charge up. Even the trickle charger you get when you buy your EV, they take like 10 to 15 hours to trickle charge overnight. Well, I don't think you can even, from empty, you'll have trouble trickle charging your car up to 100% on those things. You've got to have the, once again, going to cost you thousands of dollars to get a Sparky to put one of the... Uh, the quick charging stations on at your house because the little trickle charges, they won't do the job. Uh, Justin Dillon's on. Hey, Justin, how's your new caravan going, mate? Hope that's going well. Yeah, here you go. I thought that'd be, I thought it'd be even higher than that. Will electronic four wheel drives work? Yeah, 82% said no. Like, I just think, I just think we're a long way behind the eight ball. If they want this to work, you would think that they'd start having all service stations now would start be, start putting EV charging stations and everything in. So when you drive into a servo, you've got diesel, unleaded, gas, EV over on this, another row uh, or, or some pulling bays, and you have half a dozen to a dozen EV charging stations. Well, I haven't seen any of them yet. Maybe in the big cities, guys, but I'll tell you now, in rural Australia, I have not seen it. I have not seen it at all. They haven't even started on it. And there they want to start pinging us for buying diesel and petrol four-wheel drives. This is Chris Bowen. Yeah, good luck. We've, if we vote Labor in next elections, we're, we're, 
We deserve everything we get. I'll tell you now, if you're out there and you voted for Labor, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for the last three years of misery because that's what it's been. I don't vote for the big parties. Uh, I've never voted Labor in my life, but I'll tell you now, this uh, Albo, he got to go. He is a dud, an absolute dud, and everyone in his party, they're all as bad as each other. Okay, Tamworth, New South Wales has a few, Landy said. Okay. Are they at the servos, mate? Put some comments up, guys. If you've got a service station where you live, and I'm not talking about the big cities now, if you live in country, rural Australia, and you can go to a servo and and charge an EV vehicle up, let me know, please, because I just haven't seen it up here in North Queensland. At any servo I've been to, have not gone into a servo and gone, oh, an EV charging station, because I kind of keep my eyes out for that shit, and I haven't seen it yet. Have not seen it yet. Um, EV charging stations will be as big as supermarket car parks. Yeah, they're going to have to be, mate. They're going to have to be. Imagine the money that the... <laughs> Imagine the money they're going to have to spend on it. That's probably why they're not doing it, because I'm, I'm tipping it's not going to be cheap to put these charging stations in. Bathurst has no servo EV charging at all, big fella. Bathurst, and that's a decent-sized town, guys. Bathurst has no service station EV charging. Well, there you go. Nor is Innisfail. <coughs> I haven't seen any in Cairns. Uh Singleton just got its first one this week. Okay. Is that at a servo, Landy? Or is it a, a – I know the one in Innisfail. It's just in on the side of a park across from BCF, and you can kind of pull a caravan and a car up. It's one of. It's a, a one charging. It's not at a servo. Is that at a servo, Landy? Or is it like a standalone type charging station? And it's not cheap either. They're not free, guys. you still got to pay to – to use those things. None up at Pole Blue Landy. Uh, where is this Karoy? Karoy's out near King Aroy somewhere, I think. Uh, a shopping centre in Ripley, Ripley, Queensland, wherever that is. Jill has got two charges. Okay. Maybe some of the, yeah, some of the shopping centres have probably got charges. Uh, I was referring to servos, guys. I was referring to service stations. Uh, yeah, so same Landy here. Not at the servo, down at the uh, down the main street. Yes, and I think you'll find that that the charging stations are an independent mob, separate to servos. Um, servos, they're probably the enemy to service stations. But I'm tipping if you wanna if you wanna do these long distance driving, and you're driving along a highway in remote Australia and you're getting low on fuel and you see a big United or a big Shell Servo roadhouse, you go, oh, beauty. In you go, refuel, throw some top up with diesel, go in, have a coffee, have a tinkle break, grab something to eat if you want, grab a coffee, refuel, and within 10 minutes, you're on the highway going again. Uh, I haven't seen that on any servos. Hardwood on the M M2 near Yamba has three charging stations. Okay. So there's a few getting around there. Only two charging stations in Harvey Bay, which is a city of about 35,000 people. Can you imagine, Jack, if everyone in Harvey Bay had electric vehicles and were trying to use those too? How long does it take from empty, if you're nearly empty, and you go in and start charging up? Has anyone got an electric vehicle there in this chat room? How long does it take to charge up to 100% on one of the, not on the trickle charge, on, say, the one that's across from BCF, which are a, a fast charger, uh, is the quickest way to charge up. How much does it cost and how long does it take? I don't know. I've heard $15 or so to, to charge, to top up, but how long does it take? Uh how do they charge $5 for EV charging? I bet the money power bills for the servos would be astronomical. Yeah, I know. Now, I've heard, I don't know. Does anyone know how much it, it costs when you pull up to one of those um, independent charging stations 
and you you got to use your credit card and put the thing in your car. How much and how long? Does anyone know? Does, is anyone out there that, that knows that you can let us know? Uh, $15 seems to be the going rate. Okay, so about 15 bucks to charge up. And how long, Landy? How long, roughly, mate? There's not that you're... Not that you're old Land Rover. You'd have to worry about that problem with that. Uh, yes. The tilt train's electric. Trains work on electricity very well, don't they? But they've got the infrastructure in place for the trains, and they've had it in place for a long time now. They can send an electric train from Brisbane to Cairns, and it's fantastic. But we're a long way away from that with vehicles because there's just nowhere to charge up at the moment. I just think if they want to introduce this, you reckon that the, the infrastructure, we'd start seeing it popping up everywhere. But I've seen stuff on Facebook coming out of England and that about the amount of electric vehicles that are just being dumped. People aren't happy with them. I, I just, they're not, um, yeah. I don't think Toyota's got an electric car yet. Yeah, they're, they're sticking to the hybrid thing. I think hybrid's got merit, merit. Um, Port Douglas has got two charges. That's the farthest north uh, the Tesla map shows. Okay. So there's two in Port Douglas, which is only an hour north of Cairns. Hmm. Okay. What, what happens if you're in electric, an electric D-Max and you start going inland from Cairns and you go up to um, Lakeland, Lakeland, and you get to Lakeland and you go left to go up to Cape York and you go right to go to Cooktown. And you get there, there's a servo there. How, how far to Cape York are you going to get an electric four-wheel drive? I don't think you get too far. EVs are a joke and a very sick joke at that, Mr. Bullet. I agree, mate. Um, a Tesla Model 3, long-range performance, will cost between 21 um, twenty-one dollars and forty-nine to fully charge, providing between five hundred and fourteen and six hundred and fourteen kilometers of range. That's a Tesla. Okay, so up to fifty dollars. Friggin' hell, it's not as cheap as I thought it would be. How long does it take, mate? How long does that take? Like, if you're nearly empty, how long do you got to wait? You know, you can charge your, you can fuel your car up in five minutes. With ULP or diesel, five minutes you can be full. Go in, pay, and you're on your on the road again. How long in an electric vehicle? I don't think it's not that quick, is it? Um, easy on the EV and electric four by four. Today is the worst they're going to ever be. Yeah, maybe. Well, it can only get better. It's got to get better from here, hasn't it, mate? It want to, Anthony. It's got to get better, mate, because at the moment it's unworkable. It's unworkable. They want us to go to electric four-wheel drives and that. And I'll tell you now, in rural Australia, it's unworkable at the moment. Uh, Michael saying EVs are a scam. I reckon they're going to fall in a heap, eh? Uh, Lee, Lee saying 45 minutes on a supercharger. 45 minutes to re to get five or 600 kilometres, if you're lucky. You won't get that towing a caravan in a, a D-Max. You, you will not get 600, 600 Ks towing a caravan, uh, 30 minutes recharge on a supercharger and six to 10 hours at home. So what you can do in five minutes with uh, unleaded or diesel takes you 30 minutes. And imagine, imagine six vehicles lined up and there's only one charger. There you go. You've got three hours to wait before you get to charge your car up. If you're if it, going on that, if it takes 30 minutes to recharge, imagine six four-wheel drives lined up at the one charger here in Innisfail. You might as well stay the night. Like, it's just not workable at the moment, is it? It's not workable. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway, did I have a poll going, guys? I don't think I did, did I? Or did I? I don't know if I had a poll going. Did I quit it? I reckon it's all bullshit anyway. I think you all agree with me. I think we're a long way away from having electric four-wheel drives to do what we need them to do. Listen, 
if you can have an electric four-wheel drive and I can do what I can do in the BT50, fantastic, fantastic. But I think we're a long way off. I think we're a very, very long way off. Um, I think most people will agree. Yeah. You can't fix stupid. No, and that's exactly what our politicians are. Chris Bowen, mate. Chris Bowen probably hasn't been out of Canberra and he's banging the electric vehicles down our throat, threatening to charge everyone, uh, tradies and all that, that want to buy a petrol or a diesel ute, stinging us with extra tax and all that, so forcing our hand to buy electric vehicles when the infrastructure's not there. Absolute bullshit. Anyway, all right, guys, we've got 129 on. I'll get going. It's Sunday night. Lottie has got to work tomorrow. It's 9.40 down south. Hopefully, next time I do a live feed, you'll be back on Queensland time, guys. All you Mexicans, be back on normal bloody Australian time. I'll tell you, bloody daylight savings, it's shocking. Um, oh, the tilt train only goes to Rockhampton. I went, I went past the train today. I didn't even see if it was electric. It was the spirit of Queensland. Is that electric or is it a friggin' diesel train? I don't know. I'll have to have it to pay more notice next time. Yeah. Anyway, hope you're well. I'm back in action, guys. I'm still not 100%. I've got a bit of a cough and all that type of stuff. But I'm, I'm back to normal tomorrow. I'm going to go back to the gym tomorrow, get into a routine, uh, back into my driving lessons for the kids. Uh, I've got three more lessons this week. So I didn't do them last week because I was crook. So back into a routine. And uh, hopefully this bloody... Rain will ease up. I'm getting the camper trailer serviced on Wednesday, getting the bearings and everything checked out. And uh, I reckon I'm going to be out camping soon and really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. So uh, diesel electric, Pete McMurtry was saying. There you go. The, the spirit of Queensland's a diesel electric. So it's electric up the rocky or whatever, and then she goes over to diesel to come the rest of the way. Okay, fair enough. Slacken was on, was he? Oh, I missed you, Slacken. G'day, Mark. How are you? For everyone tuning in from overseas, Matt over there in Canada, who lives in Alaska. How's this slacking? Uh, Matt lives in lives in Alaska and works in Canada, mate, four weeks on, for four weeks off. So, Matt, thanks for tuning in. Andy Riches, didn't see Steve W on. Speaking of Steve W, if you see this, mate, I've got your, the bloody Union Jack on me hat. Steve, Steve W sent that over to me, guys. The Union Jack for one of me caps. Uh, Andy? Your cook-up's coming up soon, mate. Porcupine meatballs and bread and butter pudding, Andy, just for you, mate. Um, it's been a bit hot and a bit rainy and that, but we're slowly getting into – I'm going to get stuck into the backyard cooking. I know a lot of you out there love watching me do my backyard cook-ups. Going to get into on this. And the good thing is, Gidgey's in Townsville as from next week. So he's only three hours down the road. Hopefully, Ken, if he wants to have a bit of a break, as a spare bedroom here, Ken, come up, spend a couple of nights up here. We'll bloody do some backyard cook-ups and all that. So I crank the Weber up and all that and do some clip-ups. So hopefully you see me and Gigi guys doing some backyard cook-ups and we can get Ken involved because Ken can cook. Um, yeah, Jill hates saying loves the backyard cook-ups. Haven't done one for a while. It's too hot up here to be cooking, but it's, uh, it is cooling down. It's still quite... Like, I should have the aircon on now. I'm, I'm sweating as we speak, but it's not as bullshit hot as what it was. We all had a hot summer this year, didn't we? All around Australia, not just North Queensland. It's been hot everywhere. And I think the news said is one of the hottest summers in Australian history this year. Because I remember saying to me, do you remember it being this hot? Oh, it gets hot, but it's been real hot this year. And I know even bloody people in Harvey Bay and Phil the Maniac and even people down south going, it's been bullshit hot this year, and it has been. It's been very hot. And touch wood, I think I think we've dodged the cyclones this year. Mind you, 18 years ago, on the 24 days ago, Cyclone Larry hit 18 years ago and devastated this town. So we're not quite out of the woods yet with cyclones. One just came down, a Cat 2 over the Gulf of Carpentaria, and it, uh, it came down as a Cat 2 and it went over into the Northern Territory and that. So uh, we dodged that, and we've had one go north and one go south of us this year. So it's only a matter of time before we get smacked again. But every every year at the end of cyclone season here, we, we breathe a sigh of relief. I know the people up north of Cairns got smacked hard by Cyclone Jasper, and the 
when you go across the the um, the Daintree River, guys, on the Daintree Ferry, you, as soon as you get off the ferry, you're on Cape Tribulation Road. It only opened up the other day from earlier in some, from months and months ago. Cape Trib Road's only just opened um, for daytime traffic only. They're still working on it. It got washed away, absolutely washed away, Cape Tribulation Road. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes, Buck has a Quintrex Renegade 420 with a 40 horsepower um, Evinrude E-Tech. I have, mate. I had it in the river there a few weeks ago. I took it out for a spin. I didn't film it or anything, so I have had it in the water. Um, I run it up once a week, um, plug the hose up, give the engine a run and and whatever to make sure she's good to go. But I want to get out and um, get stuck in it. Hopefully, Ken can come up. when Gigi, when you come up, we can take the boat out for a spin, but this rain's got to piss off first, yeah. Yeah, tradies will never get to a tradies will never get to a job if they get an EVU trying to carry all their tools and that. Yeah, I know. And tradies are going to be the big losers out of this if they bring all these bullshit bloody taxes in. If you want to buy a non-electric vehicle, tradies and all that type of stuff are going to be the big losers on this. And guess what? Those costs the extra twenty grand or the extra taxes they pay to run an electric vehicle, guess who's going to pay for it? Us, when they do a job for us. So it's going to flow. Shit rolls downhill, as they say. Um, that's the other thing the government hasn't thought about. Thanks for tuning in on this Sunday night, guys. I'm back. I survived COVID. I'm back and running. Speaking of COVID, I tested positive to it. Well, every time you mention COVID, it they come out of the woodwork, and um, I wasn't... Bloody, I don't know. There's still a lot of hang up over vaccinations, isn't there? Whether you're people going, oh, you had the vaccination, you still got it. And it, it still just causes a lot of controversy, COVID, when you talk about it. But anyway, um, I survived it again. I've had it twice now. I survived it again this time. Um, I was only crook for a couple of days. The rest of it was just resting up and, and whatever. But for a couple of days, yeah, I was pretty crook. It was almost as bad as the man flu, guys. If you've ever had the man flu, blokes, you all know what I'm talking about. See you, Slacken. Talk to you again soon. See you, Gigi. Um, yeah, when you get up to Townsville, mate, you want a break, there's always a bed here for you. Get up and we'll do some backyard cook-ups and, and we'll run the camera over and do, do some good cook-ups. And, yeah, hopefully we've got some good news coming up soon. Won't let the cat out of the bag yet. Uh, I don't want to do it until it's uh, a done deal. But next live feed will be on StreamYard. And we'll do some prize giveaways on the Chief stuff too. All right. Catch you later. Chris Bowen's dreaming. Yeah, someone needs to knock him out. We need to knock the whole of the bloody Labor government out next election so this shit gets put to bed because I don't think the LNP is going to carry through with it, guys. All right. Good night. See you later. Enjoy your week, everyone. Bye now. See ya.